All right, everyone, welcome back to our Power of Five Tornado Survival Guide. We've journeyed over to the uh, chroma key set where we talk in front of the radar picture. We want to visit one of the major severe weather events of the last 20 years, November 10th. 2002, 2002, almost forgot. Where were you on November 10th? Jason? I was working at the ABC station in Charleston, West Virginia. I don't even want to know where you were. probably doing homework. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah. You were, and you were right here. I was right here during the event. 12 tornadoes touched down in the News Channel 5 viewing area. That was the Van Wert tornado, which was right. outside the viewing area. Let's talk a little bit about it. We're going to demonstrate our technology here using this event from November 10th, 2002. Yeah, it's, it's you know, you see a lot of colors on the screen. We need to do more for you than just show you where the rain and the thunderstorms are. So with the power of five, we can actually look inside the thunderstorm. Couple of things I want you to notice here. Most tornadoes occur here in northern Ohio during supercell squall line mergers. Here's the squall line, a line of storms. Here's the supercell, an individual cell, very strong, rotating, wants to produce a tornado, but is not. This is Tiffin right here. All right, storms headed right toward Tiffin. It does, a few minutes later, produce a tornado. So what happened? Well, Here's the wind from the squall line. It's going to bump into the circulation, this little part of the storm that's spinning. It's going to bump into that, add some wind speed to it, and that's when the tornado is produced. Boom, right here, tornado on the ground, an EF3, high-end EF3, did a lot of damage in the city of Tiffin, also destroyed a farmhouse, completely wiped it off the map in the city of Republic, and there is our signature of the tornado as it is traveling northeast, doing a lot of damage. All right, Jason, you're up. Okay, a couple more, Mark. We did have several tornadoes that day across the News Channel 5 viewing area. Let's take a look at a couple of these that we've been looking at. Okay, from Mansfield up towards Medina, we did have a potential there for uh, some tornadoes, and a couple here. The first one, this one near Ashland. Notice our circles. That indicates we have low-level locks on rotation at different parts of the atmosphere, potentially here for a tornado, and you always hear us say the word hook echo. This is what we're talking about, that little almost appendage there to the southwestern part of the storm up towards Savannah is heavy rain and even some hail when you see those brighter colors like the violets and the purples. Now up here in Homerville, this was a confirmed F2 tornado, did some damage to homes up there as well. Again, there's your little hook, typically on the southwestern side of the storm. Not in the middle of the storm, but typically on the end. We have something called our Barron's button too. We use that to show you how much hail could be in the storm, how big the hail could be. It also uh, tells us where the shear, the spin is, and right there, you can bet that's where the tornado was uh, back in 2002. And again, we spin the radar on our side. We again see our rotation markers there. This is bearing down on Ashland. At that point, it did not produce a tornado yet. There's hail there, and there's your spin near Ashland. It did, though, eventually drop down a tornado near Congress in Wayne County, doing considerable damage. So what an afternoon that was was Trent. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, definitely not done. Once you get this whole line, we were talking about that, uh, this whole line, this squall line rolling through. You, well, you see this bow, kind of like a bow and arrow. That's how it gets its name. What you're getting is winds on the back side of that blasting through. And there's some uh, incredibly strong winds out in that, plus the threat for tornadoes embedded in that line. That's exactly what we got uh, through Port Clinton. We had an EF2 tornado rolling through Port Clinton, uh, severely damaged about two dozen homes and several apartments rolled through. We're zooming back into the storm. Jason was telling us about there it is. Bullseye. Button. There's no doubt. Right there. No, no doubt. doubt. We have rotation on the ground. We have our circulation as well. And as we go to the next scan, that is uh, clearly a tornado on the ground. Uh, the surveyors went out the day after and actually gave it that EF2 rating. But watching this guy go through, I mean, that is just, uh, uh, just treacherous to to see that actually roll through Port Clinton. Luckily, Eventually nobody was killed in that and, one. Yeah. Uh, just incredible. In addition to those thunderstorms and, and tornadoes like that, we get winds that still gust. Like I was talking about with the bow echo, and this is proof. Winds 60 miles per hour, straight line even winds higher. Too. These are your straight line winds right there uh, that are blowing through with that bow echo. So tornadoes, squall lines, bow echoes, we're on top of it all. Let's go back to the weather center. Hope you got your homework done. Got it done. <laughs> That's why I'm here. I'm glad you got an A, too, I, I trust. Yeah, great student. Great student. Yeah, and see, major severe weather events, tornado outbreaks do happen here in northern Ohio. And you guys see a lot of cloud pictures, and you send them to us via 5 picks at newsnet5.com. Yeah, they're great. So here's a little storm spotter training. Let's start with good morning Cleveland meteorologist Tara Blake. 
We're looking at the base of a thunderstorm now and watching for some rotation. You're seeing some scud clouds here. Now, scud is clouds that have broken off the base of the thunderstorm. And what happens is that scud is a good indication of circulation, where we're going to see that center. Circulation is happening. You're seeing those clouds getting sucked in. Quite incredible. If you just want to focus in real close here, scud is often mistaken for a tornado or a funnel cloud. That's not yet in place, though the likelihood for it to happen is there as there is circulation. We're going to watch to see if a wall cloud does indeed form. There we go. Same storm, quite a bit darker. Now, this actual storm does not produce a tornado, but we know this is a high risk day. Storm spotter training is it's a crash course right now. So Trent's up yep. next. You've got a shelf. Well, let's clown, get in right, right here. Okay. Take a look at this video right here. First off, I want to mention this is a massive storm going about 10 miles per hour. Jeff Lamonti, a buddy of mine, actually got this video. And whenever we can see the grass on here, you'll notice that it's uh, blowing in toward the storm. So you have your inflow right here going toward the storm. We know when we get these shelf clouds that on the leading edge of this storm, there is massive wind. Winds, straight line winds coming straight out the front of that. So we can really see that on the radar. That's one of the big things we look for. Right, that's right. And, and uh, anytime you see one of these things, we want to see them. Five picks at newsnet5.com. Right. A shelf cloud means we have straight line wind damage. Now let's talk about a commonly mistaken for a tornado phenomena. This is a rain shaft. This is heavy rain and hail falling down from the clouds. But if you look at it, you're going, holy cow, that could be a tornado. We get a lot of these pictures sent in by you. But again, rain shaft coming straight down. There's no rotation there. There's no wall cloud. So keep that in mind next time you see a rain shaft. Jason. Okay, the, the final one is the rotation, of course. This is when we might have a tornado. What you want to look for, and this video will steady up a little bit, notice the base of the cloud. You want to look for some twisting, some actual rotation when you see that we know we're having some spin with this storm and then of course the bottom is when the cloud or even the spin the wind gets down to the surface and you have debris which you see right there as it makes contact with the ground so you have some condensation some water vapor as well as debris on the ground there and that means you have a tornado again we always want to look for the circulation so still images not necessarily as helpful as video okay the time has come coming up next we'll take a look at what you can expect this spring, as far as our severe weather outlook, and of course, those very important safety tips for you and your family. Our Power of Five Tornado Survival Guide continues after this.